In this video, I really want to talk to you about how we can shoot urban environments, how we can shoot cityscapes, how we can take advantage of these beautiful cities that we find ourselves in when we're traveling or even when we're home. Now, that does raise a couple questions with it. And, and sure, you do have to be careful, right? You really want to be careful to pay attention to the local laws and regulations. Having said that, there are opportunities to shoot in urban environments, and I, I would strongly encourage you to take advantage of them. And in this video, I think you're gonna understand a little bit more why. Now, whenever I travel, I love bringing this small drone with me, this Mini 4 Pro. It's a much quieter drone than it used to be. The battery life is great, and it just doesn't attract as much attention as drones have used to in the past. Now, one of my favorite things about shooting urban environments and, and cityscapes is the patterns and the geometric shapes and the lines. Everything that's man-made, you're gonna find more of in an urban environment, right? And they look so different from above than they do on the ground. So some things to take into consideration, as we always do, right? The timing, the light, the composition. Now the timing for an urban environment might be a little bit different than let's say landscapes. What I like to do is shoot urban environments typically in the morning, kind of later in the morning is fine too. You want some people in the shot, it adds some energy, it adds some liveliness. You just don't wanna be shooting maybe in the afternoons as much for several reasons. Now one is gonna be, there's typically more people out and you don't wanna be disturbing or bothering too many people, but it also has to do with the light. Right, so that second element, the light, that's so important here. What we're doing is capturing these top-down shots. I think those typically make for the most interesting urban shots. And you really need strong light and you want strong shadows. So as far as the light goes, shooting it in either morning or late afternoon will give you that directional light that we're looking for. And then the weather plays a key role in this too, right? We're actually looking for these, these cloudless days or these very light clouds at least. We want that direct sun because we really want those strong shadows. And now we're gonna talk about composition, right? In fact, I'm gonna be probably talking about this as I'm flying the entire time. Composition plays a key role here and especially in urban environments because there's so much going on. So your first instinct might be, let's just get high up and, and take an image of the whole city. And you're gonna find out pretty quickly that that's, it's, well, it's kind of boring. So once you do that, once you get out of, that, out of your system, then you're gonna start looking for, well, what's the most interesting things? What are the most interesting patterns? What are these shapes? And we're gonna find the most interesting ones and capture it in the best way we can to create the best photos we possibly can create. That's what we're gonna do now. Let's get started. Take a look at this pattern, right? We have symmetry here. This is pretty cool. We have bold colors, we have reds and blues. There's a pattern in here and design that we only get in these urban environments, in, in cityscapes. If we wanna make a bolder photo, if we wanna make a, a photo that has more impact, well, it kinda helps to simplify things a little bit sometimes, right? So for that, we just have to get a little bit closer. And when we get closer, now we're cleaning up the frame. We're getting less stuff in the frame. And we're starting to see some design elements take shape here, right? It's starting to look a little bit more abstract. We're starting to work with symmetry and patterns and strong lines, right? Right angles. So that's kind of cool. It's geometric shapes. And I think we could work with this too. Look at the way that these umbrellas are laid out. And look at the way that these chairs are lined out. And this is so cool. I mean, just the pattern and the shape and the design of these tops of these umbrellas. Timing and lighting here is really important because the time of day, right? We're here in late morning at the moment. It's casting that shadow. If I was here early in the morning, it'd be a longer shadow. If I was here at high noon, well, the sun would be right above. I wouldn't see that shadow as much. Now, the time of day is also important and the late morning helps because it's a beautiful day and people are out and about. So I can get those shadows of people, maybe walking in the middle of the frame, but also walking along the top of the frame, which is where this boardwalk is. And then there's the composition. This is what we're talking about. The closer I get, the tighter that frame. And I'm really liking this. I don't want to go too far right because I'm losing those umbrellas on the left. So I think those are a strong anchor on the left of the frame. I don't wanna to go too far to the left either because I'm getting that pool that's not really interesting and it has too much visual weight. It doesn't help the scene. And I'm starting to lose those chairs on the right and that palm tree. So maybe I just get a little bit closer in. I do like those chairs on the right, but again, it's just too much visual weight on the right. So I have to sacrifice those just a little bit. Maybe that right there. 
Yeah, I'm really happy with that shot. Okay, let's grab that shot. This is why I love shooting in urban environments and in, in city environments. There's strong right angles. There's clear geometric shapes. There's patterns. There's intentional design. I know a couple things I want to remove, right? And I always think in terms of this is, what can I remove, especially around the corners? Look at your edges, look at your corners. What can I remove to clean up the composition? I don't like this stuff on the right. I think it's, it's distracting. I still don't like that water. I don't think it has enough color or enough interest. I feel like it's drawing us out of the frame. So I can remove that just by getting closer. I can also pinch to zoom. So this is really important. You might notice sometimes if, if you're out and you're shooting that same drone I am, the Mini 4 Pro, and you're pinching to zoom like I am right now, and you're not able to, here's why. If you go back in your settings, if I switch to 48 megapixels, which is what I typically recommend, because why not? Why not get a better resolution, right? You'll notice when I go ahead and pinch the zoom, it says zoom is not supported in current shooting mode, but you could always crop in digitally, but you still have the resolution to crop in. So that's why. In this case, if you wanted to, you have two options. You can switch back over to 12 megapixels, lower resolution, but then we can pinch the zoom to get the composition or we can keep the 48 megapixels. I'll keep it in 48 megapixels for this. And I'm just gonna lower the drone and I'm gonna fill the frame and focus on those long shadows of those people now. This is so cool. I still have that water though, so I'm gonna get a little bit lower. And what I'm noticing is that barrier between the water and this boardwalk or this water and these steps, I love that texture. So I like this composition here. I just wanna go a little bit closer. So I frame that water out. Now I'm happy with this. Now we just wait for that one extra thing but I want to be prepared. I'm going to click on this button on the top right here. That brings up my options and my modes. So what I'm going to do is click on this burst mode here. I'm going to choose five pictures. So when the right person comes into the frame, I'm going to be prepared. Now here we have someone, this is cool. They're walking along the top part of the boardwalk, but at least we have, we have something, right? I don't really like them here. And I think if we wait long enough, we're going to get someone to walk into this frame where we want. And what I'm thinking is all that negative space on the bottom right. That's what I'm waiting for. All right, here we go. Perfect. This is so cool. We actually do have other people show up in the frame at just the right time. They offer just a little bit more balance to the photo. It's just such a cool area. I always try and find a slightly different composition, right? Maybe I just didn't get it right the first time. Maybe I can push it a little bit. Maybe it gets worse, maybe it gets better. Like, oh, they just walked exactly in the frame right where I wanted them to. So that's really cool. And what I did here is I just rotated vertically just a little bit. I went from this scene that we had before. And because we have these strong lines, here's something really interesting to keep in mind too, especially when you're shooting architecture or in urban environments and cityscapes, just rotate the drone a little bit, try and get a different angle, try and get a different perspective. They might find that it's actually a little bit more interesting once you just start pushing the envelope a little bit. I think you'll be happier with the results if you use that as a methodology every single time. So there you have it, my drone is back safely. I'm so happy with those images. So hopefully you saw what I saw, right? These incredible patterns and shapes that just developed. And it's not something that, that I can even anticipate. I can just sort of recognize it when I see it. That's my favorite part about this is, is that serendipity of when you recognize something. So I'd strongly encourage you to do the same thing, to get out in whatever urban environment you find yourself in. It could be your own backyard. It could be while you're traveling halfway across the world like I am here, but just get out find that urban environment, find the, all those man-made geometric shapes and patterns and take advantage of it. I think you're gonna be really happy that you did. This was just a free preview of the Drone Mastery course. In this course, you're gonna learn everything that you need to know to fly a drone, to capture amazing photos and incredibly stunning cinematic videos as well. So whether you're an absolute beginner or an experienced drone pilot, there's something in here that you're gonna learn that's gonna elevate your photography and your videography to a completely new level. So if that sounds interesting to you, click on that link below and I will see you in the full version of this course.